this morning on our special series, Behind the Scenes, How Does It Work? The Teletubbies. Yes, these are them. They began as an innocent, not to mention unusual show targeted at preschoolers, right? Isn't that how it began, guys? Yes. But what they became was nothing short of a phenomenon. And now, 10 years later, the Teletubbies are back, revealing their true identities and their voices for the first time. They were instantly popular and instantly controversial. Ooh. Four furry, colorful, odd-looking characters with television screens in their stomachs, living on a surreal rolling hillside. We began to discuss and think about how very young children perceive the world, which of course is different from the way the rest of us do. So that's where it all came from. Then they opened their mouths. From a children's point of view, children got it straight away. Um, adults took a little more time. Soon they became a phenomenon, generating more than a billion dollars in revenue and entertaining children in 121 countries. Gypsies walk, take one. Yet after taping 365 episodes, the production wrapped up for good in 2001. Now, ten years after their debut, the Teletubbies are borrowing a page from the Beatles, staging their own British invasion. With passports in hand, they've kicked off their first trip outside Teletubby land to catch the sights in New York City, including Grand Central Station, the Apollo Theater, and the Statue of Liberty. And for the first time, they're revealing their identities. Introducing Poe, a five-foot-tall actress who gives her baby talk a little Cantonese. Bye, 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 bye. <laughs> Lala, a choreographer of children's dance. Dipsy, a stand-up comic who adds reggae to his Teletubby speak. And Tinky Winky, a classically trained ballet dancer who stands eight feet tall in costume. This is their very first interview. <laughs> Thankfully, not all in baby talk. In 1997, all of them were veteran performers who took the job to have a job. I got a phone call to say, would you like to be in a suit in a pit in Warwickshire? No way. <laughs> and then someone said, oh, don't worry about it, just do the job. No one will ever remember it. And here we go. Each of them accepted the role along with some heavy physical demands. You wrap about 14 blankets around yourself, tie a bag of cold on your head, cover up your face so you can't see or breathe, go into a sauna, jump up and down for 11 hours, and look really, really happy about it. When the show first took off, everyone wanted to know the secret people inside. Their outdoor set, located on a six-acre British farm, was being invaded by journalists. Oh, they it? were in the bushes. <laughs> this is the, the on British the farm, press. just trying to find any bit of dirt on the Teletubbies, and ten years they didn't scratch the surface. So yes. that's uh, <laughs> Wake me up. as if things couldn't get any stranger. Reverend Jerry Falwell then accused Tinky Winky, who carries a purse, of being gay. Little boys running around with purses and acting effeminate. I found it amusing and, and quite staggering, actually, because I just thought, what, is it for real? I thought, I, I didn't know who he was, so I thought well, maybe this is someone trying to become famous. And while the show has not made these actors millionaires, it has done great things for their careers. It's credibility. You get a lot of respect just for being associated with the hits. Words even the Teletubbies couldn't have said better themselves. Well, the Teletubbies aren't making any more shows, but they are selling new merchandise, including these headbands with Teletubby antennas to raise money for autism research, which is a wonderful thing. And we'll be back in a moment. Hit it, guys. Today, 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 today. 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 Today.